Hey friends, welcome to UFD Tech. Today we're gonna to be going over a thousand dollar PC build guide to make sure that you're getting your best bang for your buck and building a system that works for your needs. But before we get into the details, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed so that you never miss a video here at UFD Tech. However, as I'm sure a lot of you know, we're in a really rough time when it comes to the availability of computer parts. And with the last PC setup guide that we did, by the time that the video went out, everything was actually out of stock. So in order to combat that with how quickly stock is shifting around on these computer components, we're instead not going to be physically building the PC, but instead instead just showing you what you should be buying. I'll also provide some expected benchmarks so you know exactly what you're getting into with this PC. But again, with just how quickly things go out of stock, I don't wanna risk buying a PC and then mentioning it to you and then you're not actually able to build it yourself. However, in case any of these products go out of stock, you can come join our Discord down below at the link in the video description and we can give you the best recommendations at the time that you're checking out this video. So let's get into the first episode of Free Build Friday after we talk about today's video sponsor, Chirp. Like a lot of you out there, I actually spend a ton of time at my computer sitting in a chair. It's true. Which leads to me having all sorts of back pains and aches. That, my friend, is where the chirp wheel comes in because it's the greatest system that I've found in order to actually alleviate the back aches that I have by stretching them out effectively. The chirp wheel itself is simple to use, and in fact, whenever you buy the bundle, you get three different sizes in order to combat different types of back aches that you might be having. You have the large gentle wheel, which gives the best overall stretch. Then you have the medium and deep tissue wheels, which are better at actually getting to precise points of aches that you might be having in your back. And it does this by having a unique four-way stretch with the spinal canal in the center of the wheel that stretches the muscles around the spine in both length and widthwise for the deepest possible stretch. And with the injection molded rigid core, it can support up to 500 pounds. Yet on top of that, that it's an FDA registered class one medical device and you can use your HSA savings in order to purchase them. And the Chirp is a great device for actually alleviating any sort of back pain you might be having from long days at a computer. So if you use the link in the video description, you can pick up the Chirp Wheel Plus three pack, but it also comes with a free posture corrector. It's been great in all of my use, so I definitely recommend you check it out at the link in the video description. So now let's jump on into the thousand dollar PC build guide and hopefully by the time this video goes live in a few hours, everything's still gonna be in stock. First, let's start off with the CPU, which is gonna be the Intel i5 10400F coming in at $153. The reason we're going with Intel is simply price and availability at this point. AMD's Ryzen 5000 simply aren't in stock. And then if we take a look at what's available on the market for other Ryzen 5s, you can see that the Ryzen 5 1600 AF is $150, whereas the Ryzen 5 3600 is $200. So the 10400F costs as much as the 1600 AF, but is gonna deliver better performance because Intel does have that IPC advantage. It wouldn't necessarily be the same if you were comparing it to a modern day Ryzen 5, but considering this is going for $150 and the Ryzen 5 5600X is 300, this is a much better value. And the money that we save on the CPU here will allow us to actually spend more on the graphics card later on, which is gonna take up a huge chunk of our budget. And honestly, with six cores and 12 threads, you're gonna be able to get the maximum performance that you want out of your video games while also still being able to do things like stream or even edit in Premiere Pro. It's a great all around trip, priced at a really good price point, and it comes with a stock cooler, which is also gonna save us a little bit of money so that we can, again, spend more on that graphics card. Part number two is this Gigabyte B460 HD3 motherboard. It's kinda on the lower end of motherboards, but it has everything that we're going to need for this PC build. It has multiple M.2 slots for the SSD that we're gonna be adding in later. It has four RAM slots so that you have room for future upgradability once we go with the 16 gigs that we're gonna talk about in a bit. And it has six USB ports, four USB 3.0, and two USB 2.0, which is gonna be enough for most people's needs. It doesn't have things such as Wi-Fi, steel reinforced PCI Express slots, or even a bunch of RGB, but it's gonna get the job done. And the best part is it's in stock at $100, which again helps us save money for the graphics card later on. If we look at a couple of other budget B460 motherboards like this MSI Mag B460 Torpedo, that comes in at $110, but isn't shipping until February 21st. You get extra features with this one, such as the reinforced PCI Express slot, the NVMe SSD heatsink, as well as the VRM heatsink, but you also get the same in terms of I.O., except for you get optical audio with this one instead. In my opinion, it's not worth waiting a couple of weeks and spending 10 extra dollars on this one, so it's not necessarily, in my mind, a good idea. But you can consider that in case you want to. The B460 Steel Legend from ASRock is also kind of in the same ballpark of being slightly more expensive, not shipping for a little while, but can also get the job done and adds in RGB. As I mentioned before, with the RAM, we're going to be going with 16 gigs, a two-stick kit that's going to allow us to get 3,000 megahertz on the speed, but also still have room for upgrading later on down the line. Intel doesn't benefit as much from RAM speed, but you're also not paying that much of a price premium to pick up the 3000 megahertz at CL16. It only costs $72, and in case this black aesthetic is not the one that you wanna go for, it comes in a variety of other colors, such as green, orange, red, but the only one that I found that's still in stock is this red edition. In my opinion, 16 gigs is kind of the minimum of what you're gonna need for a gaming PC at this point, and with a budget of $1,000, there's no reason not to go for it. You can spend about 10 to 20 extra dollars in case you wanna get RGB, but I think the clean
clean aesthetic of these Oloi Ram kind of make it a good fit into the build that we're going to be going over completely. The SSD is one that I've used several times in the past and enjoy, and it's the ADATA SX8200 Pro coming in at one terabyte. This SSD has all of the speed that you need coming in at 3.5 gigabytes per second read and three gigabytes per second write. And it also has DRAM and comes in at an affordable price of $120. But currently as of today, it also has a coupon for $15 in extra savings that'll allow it to bring it down to $105, which again, saving money in this $1,000 build project that allows us to spend more money on the graphics card. For the case, we're going with a company that's kind of taking the budget world by storm. This Montec Fighter 500 comes with a lot of features that are gonna be beneficial for your PC build later on, but not at a price that's gonna break the bank. It's not quite in stock at this moment, only arriving February 12th through the 18th, but it does have free shipping and it only costs $60. As you can see, it's a full ATX case, which is great because we chose a full ATX motherboard, but then it also includes four RGB fans. Now we're not going with the highest end components, but having more airflow in your PC is definitely gonna be better. However, the things to know about these RGB fans from what I read is that they're not actually addressable RGB, but stay in that static rainbow color. But it's $60 in a full ATX case with four fans included, also in a great white aesthetic. It's hard to go wrong with this choice. Now let's talk about the power supply for a second, which is actually where I've gone a little bit above our needs. This 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply from Sego Step is actually a great choice, but we don't need 650 watts for the i5 that we're gonna be using as a CPU and the graphics card we're gonna choose in a little bit. But it's fully modular, 80 plus gold, a $73 price with a $5 coupon makes it a good deal to snap up. And from the reviews that I read, this Sego Step power supply is actually quite decent and likely not to blow up on you, which is always great. Seriously though, I would personally use this power supply in my build. And the reason that I'm slightly going above our means because we probably could get a 500 watt power supply is simply because a power supply is probably one of the components that's gonna last the longest. Most people tend to shift these to their next builds, especially if the capacity and reliability is there. So overspending now means that we're gonna have something that's gonna last us a little longer. Plus it's only costing us about 10 to $15 over a 500 watt power supply that would be non-modular. And also when you tend to go cheaper than this, you start getting the ketchup and mustard cables, which just then makes your build look like crap. So now let's talk about the GPU. After all the other components are added up, we have about $441 left to spend on the graphics card. It was highly necessary to kind of skim on the rest of the components because the GPU market is so frustrating right now. Prices are not at all in line with where MSRP is supposed to be, so we kind of have to deal with the market where it's at. And any new GPU that I'm gonna show you on Amazon or Newegg or otherwise is either eventually gonna go out of stock by the time this video goes live, or the price is gonna be inflated to the point where you're not going to wanna purchase it. So that honestly leaves us with checking out the used market. However, if you're smart and you pay attention to user ratings, you could potentially get a pretty good deal and also stay pretty safe. However, just note that with any used PC purchase, you are at risk of the thing potentially not working upon arrival or having a shorter lifespan than you're expecting. But in all of my time of buying used hardware, I've had way more parts work than have failed on me, and it's usually pretty easy to get a refund once that's done. So our two options for GPU at this price point of around $450 is going to be a GTX 1080, which is the one I would highly recommend, or an RTX 2060. The reason I would recommend the 1080 is that number one, it's slightly more affordable. And number two, based on the benchmarks that I've seen, it's either neck and neck with the 2060 or it beats it in certain games. Certain times it does lose to the RTX 2060 and it doesn't have as robust features such as the new NVENC accelerators that's on the RTX series of graphics cards. But if you're only interested in games and CUDA acceleration, the 1080 could be a great choice for you. And you can see based on the benchmarks that either the RTX 2060 or the 1080 is a great choice if you're going for 1080p ultra gaming, which will get you above 60 FPS. You could also potentially consider 1440p and that will still give you a very respectable frame rate if you drop down to high settings. However, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, things go out of stock very quickly. So the first choice that I had was this Amp Extreme, which came in at $420, but it's already gone out of stock. So that's why I've gone through the effort of selecting multiple GPUs that you could potentially consider down below in the video description. There are multiple 1080s below the $450 price point, so it does make it very enticing to add this to your setup. However, one thing to note is that a lot of the 1080s that are actually on sale are of the Zotac variety, which you can see right here in this listing says it has weak fans. This is something that Zotac actually struggled with with their 10 series, but thankfully also if you check out on eBay, getting a replacement set of fans is only gonna cost you about 12 to $15. And in fact, I had this exact same issue with my Zotac 1080 Amp Extreme several years ago, so we actually have a video of how you can repair the fans on a Zotac 1080 in case you're interested. But there are several options such as this Gigabyte 1080 Mini ITX, this Zotac Mini with non-weak fans, this MSI blower style cooler, which is gonna be a little bit louder, but perform roughly in the ballpark that you need it to, as well as an Asus blower fan GPU and this PNY blower fan GPU. There's also another Zotac Amp Extreme that's slightly above our price budget, but you might be able to get 
get them down by making an offer. And there's also this normal Gigabyte 1080 that looks to be a pretty good deal. When it comes to RTX 2060s, we're actually in a bit of a rougher situation. The cheapest price that I found on one of these is $400 and we don't necessarily know what's wrong with it. But most of the time it actually looks like they're in the $450 to $600 region. Like this RTX 2060K Ultra, which is $500. You also have this RTX 2060SC Ultra for $490, but also this Gigabyte WinForce for $450. There are a bunch of options that are actually available in the used market. However, if you're trying to buy new, it's really going to come down to patience. I won't be able to link anything in the video description because as of right now, all of the new cards for $450 are out of stock. I would recommend that if you're going to go use, maybe try searching local marketplaces first. This is great because sometimes you find people who actually aren't aware of market conditions and will sell it way below what the actual market going rate is for a graphics card. And you also have the possibility of potentially testing it before you actually purchase it from them. However, if you are going to buy from a Macari or an eBay, just do your due diligence and contact the seller first so that you can make sure that you're having peace of mind when you're buying these cards. So adding all of that up brings us to the thousand dollar price point. However, I do want to add in a couple of extra accessories that might bring your PC build to the next level, but won't break the bank. So to go with the white Montec case that we suggested, we could also consider these white cable extensions that would add just a little bit of pizzazz to our build. Costs less than $20 and adds just a little bit of flair to your gaming PC. And in case you don't want to stick with the Intel stock cooler, because let's be frank, this stock cooler is ugly and the cables that come out of it are hideous, you could potentially consider a white CPU cooler such as this Vetru for $25 after a $10 coupon. ID Cooling also has another great one for $35 and has several more ratings to give you a bit more confidence. Or if you really want to invest in the complete white aesthetic, this Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Tower Cooler also has a white fan built in. However, the parts we chose will still look good without any extras because it's just going to be a black and white setup with a minimal amount of RGB to reflect off of the white surfaces. But the parts list that I've provided you today that will be linked in the video description with our affiliate links to Amazon should be in stock by the time this video goes live. However, in case any of these products go out of stock, you can come join our Discord down below at the link in the video description and we can give you the best recommendations at the time that you're checking out this video. I can't necessarily guarantee that these products are going to stay in stock for long, especially given the state of the current PC market, but that's the best thousand dollar PC that I could come up with today. Let me know what you think of the thousand dollar PC that we built down below in the comments and any changes that you might make for your system. Also, while you're down on that side of the YouTube, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, get subscribed to UFD Tech for more tech related content and check out today's video sponsor, Chirp. It's really been the best back stretching of my entire life and you should check them out at the link in the video description. So with that being said, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, my friends.